All right, welcome to another deep dive. Today we're going deep, really deep, beneath the Earth's surface. We're talking about the mantle, and a pretty wild study from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. They found out that the Earth's mantle got a serious makeover about 300 million years ago. The study is called Earth's Mantle, got a makeover 300 million years ago, study finds. Catchy, right? <laughs> so before we jump in, we gotta set the stage. Everyone remembers the mantle, that massive layer of rock beneath the crust, right? It's crucial for all sorts of things, like volcanoes and those tectonic plates that are always shifting around. Pretty important stuff. But here's where it gets really interesting. Scientists are saying this mantle makeover didn't happen right after plate tectonics got going. There's this gap, like a 300 million year lag between the two events. What's up with that? Yeah, it's pretty mind blowing, right? The research shows that the mantle became way more diverse in its composition, but it took, like you said, 300 million years after modern plate tectonics kicked in. So something else must be going on. A 300 million year makeover? That's one heck of a slow process. How'd they even figure this out? Did they like drill down there and get a sample or what? Ah. I wish it were that simple. They actually looked at these special rocks. We call them intracontinental basaltic rocks and kimberlites. They're kind of like time capsules holding clues about what the mantle was like way back when. Okay, so these rocks, they're like the key to the whole mystery then. What exactly are they telling us? So they point to this concept of global chemical heterogeneity. It's a mouthful, I know. But basically, it means that the mantle's makeup got way more diverse about 300 million years ago. Imagine, like, mixing a bunch of different colored paints together. That's mm -hmm. kind of what happened with the mantle. Okay, I'm getting a picture here. So what got all this mixing started in the first place? Well, about 600 to 700 million years ago, things got shaken up with the start of modern plate tectonics. And a big part of that was these huge continental plates getting pulled down into the mantle. Wait, wait, you're telling me whole continents were pulled down there? Exactly. That's what we call subduction. And it had a massive impact on what the mantle was made of. Imagine these giant chunks of continental crust sinking down, bringing with them all sorts of different materials. Wow, that's insane. So that's how all those different elements got mixed into the mantle, right? You got it. The article actually has a helpful visual figure three, I think it is, showing how subduction dragged all that material from the crust and the upper mantle down there, kind of like adding a bunch of ingredients to a giant, well, I guess you could say the mantle is like a really slow cooking soup pot. Okay, I'm with you on the soup analogy, but here's what I don't get. If this whole subduction thing started 600 to 700 million years ago, why did it take 300 million years for the mantle to actually change? Ah, that's the million dollar question, or maybe the 300 million year question in this case. It seems like the stuff doesn't just get mixed into the mantle right away. It takes a really, really long time for it to circulate around and change the upper mantle. So maybe more like a slow cooker than a soup pot, huh? But how do they actually figure out this 300 million year delay? Like, what's the hard evidence? They use something called neodymium isotopes, which are like these little chemical fingerprints for different kinds of rocks. Basically, th these isotopes showed a clear change in the rocks that came from the mantle indicating more stuff that came from continental crust. So these neodymium isotopes, they're like little breadcrumbs leading scientists back to these sunken continents. That's a great way to put it. They basically confirmed that material from those continents eventually made its way back up, leading to the more diverse mantle we have today. And here's the kicker. This 300 million year delay lines up perfectly with what scientists have predicted based on models of how the mantle moves and mixes over time. So we're not just talking about a random finding here. This actually backs up what we thought about how the mantle behaves over millions of years. This is getting really, really interesting. But before we dive even deeper, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll explore how these changes in the mantle's composition might have affected the Earth's surface. Stick with us. Welcome back to our deep dive into Earth's mantle. All right, so we're back. And before the break, we were talking about how those sunken continents led to a more well, let's say a more flavorful mantle. And of course, that 300 million year delay, it's like the Earth was really taking its time with this whole makeover thing. But you mentioned those neodymium isotopes, like their fingerprints for different rock types. Can you break that down a bit more? What's the deal with those? Yeah, for sure. So not all neodymium is the same, right? There are different isotopes of it. And the ratios of those isotopes can tell us where a rock came from. Like, was it formed deep in the mantle or maybe closer to the surface? So by looking at those ratios in the mantle rocks, the researchers could see 
the fingerprints, so to speak, of that continental material. Oh, I see. So it's like a detective using DNA evidence at a crime scene. Right. Right. Those isotopes are leading them straight to the sunken continents. Exactly. They're like little breadcrumbs leading right back to the source. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? It's amazing how they can use these tiny isotopes to piece together a story that happened millions of years ago. But I got to ask, why does this mantle makeover even matter to us? Like, does it really affect anything up here on the surface? Oh, it definitely does. More than you might think. Mm -hmm. The mantle isn't just isolated down there. It's constantly interacting with the Earth's crust. And that affects everything from volcanoes to how the continents move around. OK, now you've got my attention. Tell me more. How can a change in the mantle mess things up on the surface. All right, so first off, think about volcanoes. You know, those fiery mountains that spew lava and ash. Well, the kind of magma that comes out of a volcano depends a lot on what the mantle's made of. So if you've got a more diverse mantle, you're gonna get a wider variety of magma types. So like a volcano fueled by the before mantle might erupt differently than a volcano fueled by the after mantle. Precisely. The composition of the magma affects things like how thick it is and how explosive the eruption will be. Hmm, I never thought about it like that before. But are there any other ways this mantle makeover might have affected the surface? Absolutely. Remember, the Earth is this incredibly complex system where everything's connected. So changes in the mantle's density can impact how tectonic plates move and interact at their boundaries. And that can have huge consequences, like mountain building, the formation of ocean basins, even where continents end up over millions of years. Whoa, wait a minute. You're saying this mantle makeover 300 million years ago could have influenced where continents are located today? It's definitely a possibility. We're talking about forces that shape the entire planet, so it's not out of the question. This is seriously blowing my mind. We always learn about geology as these slow, gradual processes, but this study shows that even deep inside the Earth, things can change dramatically and those changes can ripple all the way to the surface and affect everything. Exactly. It's a great reminder that our planet is dynamic, always changing, even in ways we don't always see. And what I find most fascinating is that this study opens up a whole bunch of new questions. Like what? Give us a taste. What mysteries are we still trying to solve? Well, if the mantle could go through such a huge change in the past, what about the future? Could we see another major shift millions of years from now? And how would that impact the surface and life itself down the line? It's pretty exciting to think about. Those are some huge questions. And I think we need a moment to let those sink in. But don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll wrap up our deep dive with some final thoughts and takeaways from this amazing study. Stay with us. And we're back for the final stretch of our mantle makeover deep dive. We've been through a lot, from sunken continents to those tiny time-traveling isotopes. It's been quite a journey, and we've uncovered some really surprising things about what's going on beneath our feet. So as we wrap things up, let's bring it all together. What are the big takeaways from this study? Well, first and foremost, it shows that the Earth's mantle isn't just sitting there doing nothing. It's dynamic, constantly changing, and playing a major role in shaping the planet. Right, like this hidden engine driving so much of what we see on the surface. Exactly. And the second big point is that the start of modern plate tectonics, especially that subduction process, had a massive impact on the mantle's makeup. It basically created this whole new, more diverse mantle. And those neodymium isotopes, those were the key, right? They allowed scientists to actually pinpoint when this change happened, like, a detective solving a cold case. That's a great analogy. And the third takeaway, I think, is that this transformation took time, a lot of time. That 300 million year gap between subduction and the evidence of a changed mantle tells us that these processes happen on these incredibly long timescales. It's almost impossible to wrap your head around those kinds of numbers, 300 million years. It makes you realize how much we still don't know about our own planet. It really does. And it highlights the fact that even though these things are happening deep down, they ultimately have consequences for everything up here on the surface. Like a chain reaction, right? Change the mantle and you change everything from volcanoes to the movement of continent. Exactly. What happens down there affects everything up here. Yeah. And vice versa. It's all connected. You know, I always pictured the mantle as this boring, unchanging layer of rock. But now I see it as this dynamic, constantly evolving force that's shaped the world we live in. That's a great way to put it. It's a reminder that our planet is full of surprises and that there's still so much to learn about how it works. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. Thanks for taking us on this journey to the center of the Earth. My pleasure. It's always fun to explore these mysteries with you. 
And to our listeners, we hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the Earth's mantle. Until next time, keep exploring and never stop questioning the world around you.